Shamangelic Healing Podcast is designed as a platform to share authentic conversations about real life issues, providing you with valuable resources and tools to support you in shining your most authentic self, creating a thriving life that you absolutely love, and to support you in manifesting your soul's mission. Welcome to this episode of the Shamangelic Healing Podcast, where today we're going to explore through the lens of phenomenal, world-renowned yoga photographer Robert Sturman. He is an incredible photographer that is telling the story through yoga and through his camera about first responders, fire, fire, firefighters, people that are in the military, police officers, amputees, people that are recovering from breast cancer and how yoga is helping them and how yoga is for everybody. I'm so grateful and honored to have this world-renowned humanitarian share with us how he is using his lens and the camera to bridge humanity and heal disparity. So check out this episode. You're absolutely going to love it. And if you are listening, I invite you to watch the video of this on YouTube as well, because we're going to be sharing some of his most incredible thought provoking images that really elicit a deep soulful connection with the stories of the people that he has had the blessing to photograph from children all the way to hundred year old women doing yoga, all walks of life in prisons, police officers, this is just an incredible opportunity to be reminded that yoga is for everybody and it bridges us all together. So you're gonna love this, check out this episode. Welcome to this episode of the Shamangelic Healing Podcast with a phenomenal photographer, yoga photographer that is also bridging a humanitarian message with that yoga is for everybody, all walks of life, and bridging diversity and I'm so impressed with your work that's why I wanted to have you here so welcome Robert uh, I'm so happy to have you it's an honor thank you Anahata yeah so one of the things about your work uh, and I've watched it evolve over decades now um, and you're you're a phenomenal photographer first of all your craft and how you uh, choose ang angles and you know, different treatments with your photography is just extraordinary. And what I'm really inspired about to share with the audience is how you've taken the photography to the next level in filming inmates doing yoga and police officers doing yoga and amputees and women that have had breast cancer and all ages, children, different countries, military and I, I think that there's such a humanitarian approach to the direction that your photography has taken and um, it's just it's touching so many people and uh, tell us a little bit about your miss mission with your photography. The camera it just occurred to me one day that it's as if it's a magic box that has the potential to change the world and move humanity in a more positive direction yeah. because you know there's there's a lot of different art forms but a photograph is is still the main form of communication in my opinion and if a photograph is a great idea like for instance inmates practicing yoga you can't go wrong with that mm. and you make images that people can feel they can be emotional about then they remember it they remember that feeling they're moved by it. It's, it's harder to be moved by reading about it and the statistics, mm. but the images we remember. And I realized that if I would make enough images that people could feel and spread them around and, and give them the opportunity to go on and live a life of their own, that I could influence the way the world is and um, create a different reality. You're really doing that. And I, and, and, I think specifically about what we're going to go into all of these different areas where your photography is shifting awareness or shifting misunderstanding or separations between people um, and healing an aspect of humanity and specifically with those that have experienced 
you know, that are amputees that have lost, you know, a limb or, a, you know, a part of their foot or a leg or, and are doing these beautiful yoga postures or are in, um, you know, in a, in a wheelchair. And I think that in addition to helping to demystify a disability, you're, you're also inspiring other people that have disabilities that the yoga is for you too. And you can be fabulous and amazing and photographed and you don't have to hide yourself just because there's a, there's, you know, you're, you're, there's a part of your leg missing. So tell me a little bit about how you think that's impacting those people that you've shot in those situations. There, uh, it, my camera can be a voice mm -hmm. for people to tell their story. And for instance, breast cancer survivors yeah. um, that are left with scars on their chest. Mm -hmm. Making beautiful photographs of them helps them to have an opportunity to reclaim their their dignity yeah and to to become less shameful yeah. and to find beauty in the scars and then so they have they're able to tell that story and step into that and relax into the beauty of it because we're all scarred yeah and it gives other people permission to do the same yeah so many people are struggling with that some part of their body is gone for whatever reason whether it's from cancer or whether it was from military or a car accident whatever it is or, or a birth defect and you know people feel so alone in that and i think your photography is doing such a phenomenal job at demystifying that and the more images that we see of how beautiful it yeah. is to be with one breast or with one leg um, and still being confident and beautiful proud. and proud, mm -hmm. I think it really helps other people. And it helps those people that have felt different or disassociated or maybe ambivalent to people going through that experience to elicit a level of compassion with, what, with what just one image. Robert, it's just phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, it really is. So um, tell me a little bit about what it's like to shoot in San Quentin, you know, in, in, in prisons with, with, with men and women doing yoga there. It's a really one of my favorite places to work. Wow. Because it puts everything in perspective. And when I see inmates practicing, they have so little freedom. And it just to take advantage of that one hour a week that they get, it's a privilege. And it just, I walk out of there just feeling like such a, a spoiled brat. <laughs> we so, do live a life of privilege yes, and take a lot of things yes. for granted. So what it's like is, it's beautiful. Prison has taught me so much about photography. Mm. The first time I went in was about eight years ago, and the, I immediately realized that it was not about making the pictures, because the, the gentleman that I was working with, they didn't ask to look inside the camera, they didn't ask me to send them a copy, they didn't ask me to tag their account, they, <laughs> they, they had zero concern about what the picture was but what they did feel was seen mm. and that's what informed me about the power of photography to help reflect light back to people that you're paying attention to them yeah. you care about them these people have been have, have had all their rights taken away and and for me to, to be have the opportunity to come in there and just look at them like I would look at the, the cover, uh, a model that it was going to be on the cover of Yoga Journal. Just paying attention to people and people being seen is a very healing thing. That we're all, we have these cameras in our phones that are going to be connected to our skin for the rest mm. of our lives. And maybe underneath that is the desire to pay attention to people and celebrate others. Well, I think especially when somebody doesn't have those freedoms and may not be having that freedom for their life. They, right. may, be in, they may be in for life. Um, and, and 
one of the things that I think yoga does and your photography does is also give permission to say, you are not your past. This is who you are now. Yeah. You're this empowered man or this empowered woman that is turning your life around, making a difference. And that there is beauty in who you are today is, I think, very healing for somebody that may be feeling guilt or shame or external judgment or a, a separation from humanity with, yes. with a lack of compassion or understanding because it's like, okay, you're over there, you're in prison, you're separate for a reason. And I think what you're doing is moving across that barrier and moving across those bars to say, you're separate, but you're not alone. You're separated only by distance, but we're all under the skin and behind the bars and uh, through all of our emotional uh, you know, separation, same. We all have things that we did, we're embarrassed of, of doing that oh, yeah. um, we're living in our own prisons of guilt or shame or regret or embarrassment or self-loathing or any of those contracted emotions. And in, the, in your photography, especially with the prisoners, I think that it takes me into a part of myself that um, is, elicits compassion for, for somebody else's story that I can yeah. relate to, even though it might be totally different than my own. Um, it helps soften a part of, of me and, and humanity, and I think those images help do that for others as well. Yeah. And they're doing the same poses as you and I. Right, right. And they're working on the same things. They're trying to feel better. Yeah. And that's the reason I practice yoga. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into your story a bit. Like, why, what, what, you, because you've blended, what I've seen in your craft is that you've blended this passion for yoga and this gift and passion for photography. And, you know, those two intersected for you at some point. Yeah. And I, I noticed years ago, as your photographs started to change, that you've also created this intersection of humanity and, and healing in the diversity. And I think that's the sweet spot when you're able to have your lifestyle and your passion also serve a greater role in humanity. And that's what in the yogi community is called Dharma, where you're really being in alignment with who you are and your soul's mission and purpose. And it feels like you have most certainly found that. And I imagine that wasn't always the case. So how did, you, how did you start with this whole process? With becoming an artist? You know, yeah. And, right. and how yoga fit into that. Why you connected those two? You know, your, your, your yogic path, but also your artistic path. Well, when I was 14 years old, my father took me to boarding school. And when we got there, he gave me my first camera. And I asked him, what am I supposed to take pictures of? And his response was, anything that you love. Mm. And I know he didn't think that much about it, but as I think back on it, it would be the, one of the most important pieces of advice I'd ever received. Wow. And so, I'm not going to get into my whole everything, but when I was 30, like I grew up in Los Angeles, so yoga was all around and yeah. it was no big deal. And I'd always known about it, that people did it to be calm and Whatever. meditate, yeah. and, you know, people were a little <laughs> like enlightened in the, if they were yogis. Mm. So I was ideologically conditioned to believe that artists live lives of self-destruction. I mean, my, my heroes in the history of art lived lives of self-destruction. They weren't my role models. Right. And I wanted to rewrite that story. Mm -hmm. So I went to college and graduate school and, and lived my life as an artist. And when I was 30, I decided to, and practiced a little yoga here and there. When I was 30, I decided to go to India. Mm. And when I, cause I wanted to do a body of work of the Polaroids that you mentioned yeah. I did. So. I, and I had never, I didn't do yoga photography yet. And when I got to India, I acclimated myself in Pune for a few days at the Osho Meditation mm -hmm, Center. Mm -hmm. And right when I walked in, there was a very large sign. And it was a passage and it was entitled, The Way of the Creator. Mm -hmm. And it's read something to the effect of, to be creative means to be in love with life. You can only be creative if you love life so deeply 
that it becomes natural to offer a poem here, a dance there, a painting there, a song there. And that would be the missing link mm. to all of my education. I realized that I could create from a place of joy because I had also been guilty of creating from a place of desperation because I felt so bad for so many years that when I saw that, that began my journey as a yogi, mm. that I, I was, began to give myself permission to have a beautiful life and let the work be a natural expression of a life, a beautiful healing life mm -hmm. filled with light rather than desperately trying to find an identity and feel better and, and be lost and like so many of my heroes were. Yeah. And so shortly after that, I um, started to practice yoga. And when I was practicing yoga, I did look around and I thought, wow, these people involved in this figurative poetry mm. are incredible. This is a beautiful way to tell a story about humanity longing to be greater people. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the poses, they're reaching, the hearts are towards the sky, the hands are in prayer, eyes are closed. It's a beautiful, beautiful practice. And if people didn't know anything about yoga, they might look at that, the yogis doing this stuff and be like, and say, wow, who are those yoga people? They're, they, they're connected to something. They're, they're interesting. They're, they're really devoted and sincere. Their hearts are, are open and they're reaching towards something greater. Yeah. So over time, as I began to, to see that and study that and celebrate that, I realized that I could tell, I could photograph all of humanity and tell this great story of all of humanity trying to be better from police officers to firefighters to doctors to house painters breast cancer survivors maasai warriors soldiers on and on and on every kind of human being is practicing yoga and my work isn't necessarily yoga photography it's about human beings wanting to be their best that's why everybody unrolls their mat and it's so popular now, which is a wonderful thing because it's, it's happening in, in prisons, in the military, in schoolyards across the world. It's, it, you know, it, this movement is really underneath it is this whole desire, which all of us have to not stagnate. We have this desire to grow and evolve and keep expanding at, at a core human level. We all have that. Yeah. And yoga is one of those pathways and there's different aspects and layers to yoga that can meet you where you are. If you're not ready for enlightenment and it's just about healing, then maybe we start there or it's just about getting into your body if there's been a lot of trauma and may, it might be just relaxing and softening and, and, and coming into a healing, gentle, compassionate space after war, that might be where the yoga meets people. It might be um, after a surgery or after a divorce or after an attempt at suicide. You know, yoga can meet people wherever they are and, you know, grow from, you know, the, the lowest frequencies of human experience all the way up to ecstatic bliss and joy and expansion and, and in higher states of enlightenment and consciousness, all accessible through this mysterious um, experience that everybody has access to where you just say everybody can roll out a mat and you don't even need a mat you know no, you, don't you need can a mat. do it you can do it in your living room you can you can do it in a prison cell you can do it outside you can do it at school and um, it is wonderful that this has really been waves and waves of of reaching different people in different walks of life and i find i'm going to go back for a second to um, your camera at 14 and I think that this is you know this is rite of passage time and I, I find it very fascinating that your father stepped back and you had to go off and figure out how to be yourself and and this is what happens a lot of times with rite of passage or when we're when it's time for us to grow is that 
people that we're leaning on move out of the way, people that mm. are guiding us or our teachers start stepping back so that you have the opportunity to figure out in your own way, your own yoga, like who am I? Because my father can't answer that. My teacher cannot answer that. I have to actually find out what I love and in this case, and, and what I love to photograph, and that I actually, and that you actually loved ph photography. You had to figure that out to see is, is this camera just my dad's wish for me, or is it actually a fit for me? And so I want to acknowledge, first of all, on your journey, this rite of passage that was happening with your dad stepping back with some great advice and also some space, and that you have been figuring out for decades what it is that you love and what it is that is in front of the camera that you find captivating enough to say, this touches me and I want to photograph it in such a way that it can touch other people. And so I want to acknowledge that these three intersecting has been growing you as a human being, the yoga of finding what you love, the yoga of using your craft for something greater is, is really powerful. And, and, and beautiful, by the way. And fun. And fun, you know. It's so much fun to light so up the world. It's so much fun, right? It really is. Yeah, yeah. Like what you're doing. You, you, you sit with people and you pay attention to them. Yeah, yeah. You know? This you're is more, my dharma. You're interested. Yeah. Rather than trying to be interesting. It, it is my dharma to, to find people in that place and, and where they're wanting and desiring a core life shift and just need support, presence, guidance, compassion, inspiration, honesty, tools to kind of help them through that movement of that process. And um, inspiring millions to shine has just been kind of this mantra that came in last year. It was never that number before. And just like your dad said, do what you love. And he was joking. I know, just right? It just, like, just we think, right? And at a Get soul level, <laughs> it was just like, yeah. It was everything. It was everything. There's yeah. that medicine in that. And this came through this last year, just like that sign came through at 30 at just yes. the right time. This mm -hmm. last year, it was like, inspire millions to shine. And I'm like, huh, well, I, that's going to take more than just one on one. And the depths of the conversations that I have with thousands of clients are so deep. I'm like, gosh, this really needs to be heard at, at, at a larger level. So it, it got me out of my comfort zone to say, well, then it's going to have to be on bigger platforms. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> We're on such similar paths because I started a podcast as well. And I don't love it. It's hard work, <laughs> yeah. you know, It's because you have to pay attention ask questions and and just it's 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 a true art you're doing a great job thank you yeah. thank you well i much prefer being a guest yes i you know <laughs> and i have been on lots of podcasts yeah. and i love being a guest and i also love to find those stories that are inspiring that people can relate to mm -hmm. because this was something you had to figure out and for those people watching and listening everybody can do something that they love Everybody can make a difference on humanity, and it might not be with a camera. Right. It might be very in a very different way. And um, this is that that listening to that soul's calling. So, can you explain to um, to the listeners and, and those watching how it shifted into specifically and why you wanted to photograph some of these beautiful souls? that were, were not necessarily your typical, beautiful, you know, 20-something, lean, flexible yogi. You know, what, what, what shifted yeah. within you that says that's beautiful? It, it was an evolution. Yeah. And it, it started with prison, that I happened to be fortunate enough to be invited into a California prison um, by a warden who had just started a yoga program there or it had, had had started a couple years earlier actually but she was retiring and she wanted to have it documented mm, nice. and just it just started to grow yeah. because after people saw that then i was approached by people in the military and it just started to happen and i i began to just I wanted to photograph the world, yeah. not just the people selling leggings and, and that, <laughs> you know, that's not my, 
It's, right? I mean, sometimes it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. but I wanted an excuse to photograph the entire world. Yeah. And I mean, going into a prison is that's that's right? that's the top for it's, me. It's right all there. of it. H humanity. We're yeah. we're all of these different walks of life, different shapes, different sizes, different stories. Yeah different cultures, different spiritual beliefs, yeah. and especially with so much of this disparity right now between military and police um, and, and yeah. politics and, and hate yeah. happening with the violence um, and the misunderstandings between um, and police and, and communities. Can you um, dive into that a little bit? Because I think that seeing a police officer in one of these beautiful poses in the middle of New York City <laughs> or something, or, or seeing um, on an aircraft carrier, you know, a naval officer doing yoga, it, it just to me, uh, it just bridges that part of me that doesn't quite understand that because I, I haven't been a police officer. I, haven't, I don't understand the military. I respect it. I appreciate it. I value it. And I, there's, there's a disconnection because I, I haven't, I, I don't know what it feels like. Um, so what, what has been your experience in, in moving into those places? Well, with, with police officers in particular, first of all, it's, it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. No kidding. Yeah, that's for sure. And we need police officers. And I started to do it at a time when they were really under that's a lot right. of fire yeah. because of a lot of shitty police officers yeah. that, that did horrible things. But most of them aren't like that. Yeah. And one of my close, a very close friend of mine who I practice yoga with was a cop in Santa Monica. And we just started making pictures together, beautiful pictures. And what I realized was that those pictures could be used to inspire other police officers to, to see themselves in that picture and that kind of bridge yeah but also to humanize them because they're fathers husbands right just Wives, mothers yeah right, right mothers yeah and and, the, and it felt very necessary yeah. and it's so easy you know it's the, these people are in my life all i'm doing is pushing a button oh honey <laughs> so much more than that <laughs> So much more than that. I know. You know, but, and, and... But it's right there in front is, of me. It, it, My well, close with, friend, who's a cop, who happens to have an exquisite yoga pro practice. So then what happens is these pictures get on the internet. Yeah. And they get written about in newspapers and articles. used for all kinds of articles. Yeah. And it goes around the world. And it starts to become a reality. Yeah. And well, people start to use them to promote their volunteer work right. with offering yoga for first responders, for instance. Mm -hmm. They might use one of my images. Oh, wonderful. And, and especially when we see an officer with a badge and a uniform and a hat and, and a gun, it can be, you know, separating and, and authority, the, the right to arrest, imprisonate, you know, um, it can be, and ticket, it's, it's scary. Um, uh, especially in communities where there is a lot of violence and especially where in communities or in the past with certain cultures and experiences um, where there has been an excessive use of force or an appropriate use of force and um, just misunderstood. And, you know, I think that there's, there's so many, there's two sides of these stories to be telling from um, uh, of the challenge and the, and, the, and the misunderstandings that have happened between communities and, and police. And so I think that what you're doing is humanizing. This, this man or this woman takes off this uniform and they have children yeah. and they, they end. And struggles. And struggles. And the fact and that they're. post traumatic stress. That they're willing to actually put on a bulletproof vest and go into a, a life-threatening situation, yeah. let's see, every single day, um, makes me have an incredible amount of respect. Yeah. And I recently learned that um, more police officers die from suicide than anything yeah. else. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, and I think that that's the case with with our military as well. Yes. Our highest our highest suicide rates are from uh, our our military coming back I mean, with imagine, PTSD. Yeah. Imagine. I mean, you're oh, you have bad days. Imagine if you saw the horrors of war. No. Wow. It's I I can't even imagine. Right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you've been in some incredible places with your photography. Um, with different parts of the military. So what has th that been like? You know, it's be, I'm like a little kid. It's, <laughs> it's like, you know, when I was uh, at the academy studying art, never in a million years would I think that I'd be welcomed on a base and, and respected to, to tell their stories and them, oh, wow, it's nice to meet you. I love your work. And I mean, these guys are like... Uh, and, and I've just, I've become very close with the, uh, the men and women um, that are in the military. And, and there's a, just a deep connection that happens because the relation, you, photographers, it's, it's such a blessed profession if you do it with integrity. Mm -hmm. um, because I make a photograph with them. And then it goes on living a life of its own yeah. and we're always connected and we grow. We're still in relationship, even if we, we don't see each other for a long time. But when we see each other, there's a friendship yeah. and that happens with so many people that I work with. And it's for me, it's a great honor. The, the military thing is just, I think it's just so, so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it you is. Know? It's yeah. really cool. The first time I was invited on a base and there was um, helicopters and planes and it was just, it was amazing because I'm just... Right? You're just a guy from L.A. An artist, you know? <laughs> and here I am, you know, working with, with the United States military. And in photographing, what does that feel like when you're behind the camera and, and what do you see shifting when a person is stepping into that posture and they're wearing their uniform yeah what what are you feeling that you what is it that you're noticing that the camera is capturing just how much i care about them and yeah. how cool they are yeah you know that's really the secret ingredient is to just care yeah like what you're doing right now mm -hmm. And so when that happens, they can feel it yeah. and they light up. Yeah. And, and that's it. They, they light up they get, light because up. They, they may be in the next week or month be deployed and they may True. have a, about to be have a whole different experience where the yoga is really being tested now in battle and how to be compassionate with the struggles and to be how to be compassionate in in the challenges of, of war and battle. I mean, these, these are people that are um, really doing an incredible service and challenging for their own soul to be in a place of, of military or using force or having to use a gun or taking a life. And this is where I think the yoga is so helpful in, in healing the wounds from that disparity of whatever physical or emotional challenges that we experience as humans and I, you know, in our human walk of life. And I think um, taking a life of another or being in a military service or a police officer would be one of those that would be quite challenging. And the yoga really helps to bring them home after that to their own humanity, to forgiveness. Um, it's a long journey. It is a long journey. And I'm seeing it, people that I really thought had their head on right. I see them walking a very yeah. thin, thin line yeah. at some point. And that, that's where the yoga can be the saving grace is... If they stick with it. Yeah, if they stick with it. And hopefully they yeah. create another opportunity for another chance at life. Right. And heal those wounds. Right. Because that is, we're going to keep having challenges and battles in life, all of us. They're going to look different. The classrooms, the battle room, the battlefields um, for each of us may be with an addiction. It may be with, um, with violence. It may be with uh, a, a feeling of unworthiness. 
you know, we're all going to be fighting our wars and our battles and, you know, we're, or with depression. And this is the opportunity to kind of bridge that there is sameness with all of our struggles and that there's opportunities to rise above that. And um, I think that your photography is helping to demystify that a lot and give people permission, um, you know, to heal and to be vulnerable and to be seen um, and understood that we're really all the same under the uniform, whatever the uniform is, whatever the roles we're playing, that we're, there's all real human struggle and human potential dancing in there. Um, so tell, uh, tell us a little bit about feeling, uh, how it feels to photograph yoga through the ages. You mean like, children to 100 yeah. year olds uh-huh uh-huh tell us your you know journey well, with that i mean the the i met tao porch on lynch um eight years ago when she was just 93 uh-huh and we met in central park uh she showed up in a, a ballroom red ballroom <laughs> gown and uh I realized with, so we've been working together two, three times a year ever since. She always wears a different colored dress. We made some beautiful art yesterday, actually, in, in the mountains. But I realized that she is an idea. Right. And she's a, she's part of like the, well, what's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> she is, for those that don't right. know, we will have a photo of her up. And okay. if you are listening to this podcast, we really invite you to also go on to YouTube and watch it because we're going to be showing some of your amazing photography. And she is, for those of you that don't know, the oldest living yoga teacher. Right. She had just been, a few weeks before I met her, she had just been awarded, honored by the Guinness Book of World Records right. for that. Right. So... Uh, not that there hasn't been yogis also teaching a in ancient India as well. True. Uh, but uh, this is a current. She's current, uh, currently 100 years old, and teaching a yoga class today, actually, today at, at the Sedona <laughs> today at the Sedona <laughs> Yoga Festival. And so we're going to put her link in as well so that you can follow her as well. Because she does tell a story, and your photography tells a story. I'm like, if she can do that levitation pose at 100, why it what is my excuse right um and so she is about yoga for longevity yeah and you that you can pick it up at any age and that you can be thriving and joyful and flexible in life you don't have to have you don't have to age with a right. body that is doesn't allow you to dance and play and laugh and and um, enjoy life but interestingly enough so for the past eight years that i've been working with her the work has looked almost idealistic. Mm. She looks youthful and like she can do anything. And I'd been doing that for years. And a few months ago when I saw her, I did a, a, the hundredth shoot. And I thought, I don't want to bother her with any more pictures because we've done everything. And we have a friendship now. So that. maybe I'll it's make beautiful. a little video here and there of her. But yesterday they wanted to do, she wanted to do, make some pictures. And uh, so I thought, um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to photograph her face close up. I'm going to start photographing her eyes and her skin and her lines. And that's what I'm going to do now. Yeah. And so we made a beautiful one yesterday. And, and this is the yoga of embracing our aging. Yes. We are all right. aging. We can still have a youthful spirit, which is what is so inspiring about her. She's just got this zest and joy for life. And there's this whole movement, you might have seen this, called Growing Bolder instead of Growing Older. Uh -huh. And it's photographs of people in their, let's say, twilight years that are just, yeah, embracing the wrinkles, the sags, the bags, the baldness, the gray hair. And, it, you know, like your photography does, see the beauty in that. Because with the way Instagram and touch-ups are and Hollywood is, is that you erase all of these fine lines that are your stories, yeah. you know. And 
these tucks and lifts don't allow you to actually see what this what this person actually looks like when they're 75 and 95. We take all those people out of Hollywood. We don't, we don't want to see you old anymore. And thank you for showing what age looks like and that it can be beautiful. Um, I remember my, my grandmother who lived to be 105. Wow. Yeah. Just always sparkling and lit up and you know, never a lift or a tuck or of, of anything. And she just embraced her sags and her bags and all of that and, and was able to be light about it and, and, and reminisce in, in her youth, but also celebrate, this is who I am today and I wouldn't change a thing. And out of that fear of not aging, she hardly had a gray hair, even at a hundred, because she wasn't worrying and fussing and trying not to be her age. So thank you for bringing out that with um, seeing what beauty looks like, the yoga of embracing your true age. And yeah, photographers can be great criminals. Uh, <laughs> explain that. Explain that. Well, there's a <laughs> just lying. Yeah. Thank you for your honesty. Lying. And um, this new sentence statement that was invented uh, in around, you know, at this, at the turn of the millennium, uh, I'll fix it in, in Photoshop. Post, no, or in post, yeah, post I shop. think that's, it's so degrading. Mm. It's giving, it's giving myself permission to not be present now mm. because I'll take care of it later. I mean, that's one of the things besides, you know, if somebody wants a, a pimple removed or something of that nature. But this perfection is, is leading people to unworthiness, 100%. inadequacy. And the more we can, we can tell the truth, the more of an opportunity there is to heal. Yeah. And, and then we don't feel that unworthiness. I'm not good enough. I'll never be right. like that. Because there's this unattainable level of perfection that's happening that would that is where authenticity of emotions of age of wrinkles of pimples yes everybody gets pimples yeah. you know we're all going to get wrinkles and and grays and you know we're going to have we all have loss we all have pain and to pretend like your relationship isn't struggling or that you don't have challenges with your health or your emotional body is, is exactly a lie. And so I don't think photographers are the only ones. I think we're all so. potentially <laughs> guilty of that if we play into not being authentic about it. And I think this is the real, this is why I, I um, wanted this podcast to launch is because I want real unedited conversations, real stories, real emotions, and real truth told. You know, I've already shared things on, on these episodes where I was like, wow, okay, that's out there now. And a level of transparency that is just allowing me to embrace my authenticity and, yes. and knowing that authenticity, just like your photographs capture, okay, I'm without this breast or I'm without this knee or I'm in prison and loving those parts of us that we are, are trying to hide and actually exposing those parts of us. And I think this is where your work is doing such a phenomenal job. I hope this podcast is doing that where we can actually uncover all of the fake and all of the post editing and actually be real and raw and genuine about where we all struggle and where we're challenged and, and where we're actually the same. And that's where I think we find hu humanity coming together and healing where it's like, oh, you've dealt with depression or, oh, you also have this breast cancer. I didn't know that hiding under your shirt. I didn't know that, you know, oh, you also get pimples. <laughs> you also get sad. And um, this is where I think your work is telling a story that it, it, it is more real and authentic. So thank, thank you. you for having the courage to do that. There's no choice. <laughs> Once you, it's, it's impossible to live with that voice in the back of my head. I should, I should be doing this yeah. or I know I, that kind of thing. That, that was with me for a while yeah. when I, my priorities were a little different. Yeah. Well, and this is where 
when the solar plexus is evolving and growing, the part of us that is holding integrity and discernment and our inner truth, we can only deviate from that from, for so long. And when our soul is calling and beckoning us forward, yes. that same part of our solar plexus will also have, have us face whatever fears are in the way. You know, whether that's fears of judgment, fears of failure, fears of criticism, uh, whatever it is, we're, we're going to fear of not being liked, you know, um, and it's actually in that authenticity, which actually endears people to us, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, oh, wow, that was courageous to be honest and vulnerable and real. And, and thank you for that, because now I cannot feel so alone. Um, so uh, this is where I think your work is doing this bridging into loving what you do, but also, and also having a positive impact on humanity. So um, what is next for you with your work? You have so much energy. <laughs> <laughs> I love what I do, just That's like you. Great. I love what I do. Next is, well, next week I'm going to Mexico City and Veracruz, Mexico, with uh, the founder of Prison Yoga Project, James Fox, and we're going to work in three different Mexican prisons. Wonderful. So we're taking it international. Wow. Oh, wow, that's it, great. There was already programs set up there, so we're gonna do that. Fantastic. And I'm just gonna keep doing what I do and yeah. working on myself so that I have a better relationship with myself so that every day I wake up and wanna do this stuff and want to share it more and want to want to create more a future of this and more light right but it takes radical self-care to be able to do that as which, you know which is the yoga you yes. know and that that's where that's where you and i and different people listening and watching that that are finding themselves in service to some greater calling are also met with how do i learn how to really honor and care for self yes. within my passion that it's not at the expense of self and that it's not taking me out of my yoga or posture of, of self-care, self-respect and wholeness and making sure that the yoga isn't being compromised in the, in the space of service, but that it, it gets deepened. Yes. And I get stretched by that, honestly, yeah. <laughs> uh, every day. Uh, um, and um, I keep meeting my edge of growth, of where there's a voice of, oh, I don't have time, or this is important, or this is more important. And that's my yoga today, is, is continuing to keep meeting that voice of prioritizing myself in the whole aspect of what it is that, in what I'm here to do and serve. So it's, it's for sure a dance. Um, and you have brought this internationally, not only filmed in different cities around the world, but um, with different cultures. Let's talk about your work in Africa. Africa in, I believe I went in 2013, uh -huh. and I had seen pictures on Facebook of Africa Yoga Project, and I just thought that was the neatest thing in the world. <laughs> and I randomly sent their info at Africa Yoga Project uh, uh, an email saying, hey, I'm a photographer, I, I'd be interested in learning about coming in and collaborating and doing a series, a, a portfolio with you guys, telling your story. And within a few hours, I got a response. Wow. <laughs> hey, let's set up a Skype call. We wow. know your work and Look we'd like that. to talk about it. So from there, it just happened. And that was all part of the experiment as to what, how much power intention yes using this camera and with these intentions how much power it has it's opening doors and i wanted to tell that story because africa yoga project is an amazing story mm. and it's it's the closest thing to like to national geographic and my yoga journey <laughs> can get most likely and I, I felt that the world needed to know about Africa Yoga Project and the pictures that I saw weren't that strong. They, they captivated me, but I felt like they could be stronger. And so I went there, I worked with them in prisons, 
at orphanages um, in, in very poor neighborhoods and worked with youth and, and the YMCA and it was, it was incredible. And when I came home, I sent, submitted it to an editor at the New York Times and two weeks after I was home, there was a big article about Beautiful. this portfolio I did in Africa. So the experiment was a successful experiment. Yes. The camera had the ability to expose it. Well, and tell the story. This is where your craft and your skill, because like you said, there were pictures before, but they weren't as deep and powerful. And this is where I think your craft and honing your craft about the angle and the color and the lighting and the subject and the environment, all that level of detail takes the whole story and lifts it off the page. What your, your photos are not in any way 2D. They're not in any way flat because it just, it, when I was, you know, in, in watching, um, you know, in taking a look at those beautiful photos, which are phenomenal, it transports me right there. It transports me right there, which is the powerful, a testament to your skill as a photographer because others had done this before and, and, um, and it's just opening so many doors. And I, I just, I love to see, I can see these photographs, not just the ones from Africa, but also the ones about the military um, and children and in prisons being up, showcased in oh, those yeah. places all over. Yeah. Um, you know, in, the, in police academies saying, hey, here's, here's what it is to be a proud, you know, police officer. Here's another version of what it is to be in the military. Here's what it is to be, you know, th another face of Africa as well. Or breast cancer, the, like the images of the breast cancer, just so powerful and moving. Um, so what advice would you have about some? Let yes. me go back. To, yes, go back. <laughs> let me go back to your net, what's next question. Yes. Um, I want to do museum exhibitions. Yes, please. I want this work from all over the world that screams that yoga is for anyone and everyone, anywhere and everywhere. I want it printed and framed large and exhibited, telling a great positive story about humanity. I think it would be an excellent exhibition, and that's what I'm envisioning. That's the big thing on my list right now of what I want to, ha to happen. Definitely. Do you, do you remember there was that uh, stillness in water or that the, the, the one that they, they came to LA 15 years ago or something like that? Ooh, that was the most moving exhibition I ever saw. Like in my that. Life. Ashes and snow. Ashes and snow. Phenomenal. So Large. I get chills. I, Cause I was like, I still play that whenever I have a party at my studio, I just have it on. It's so deep that we just planted that seed. I know that that's been percolating for you. That isn't just a dream. That is most certainly the next step in inevitable, inevitable that that kind of thing be able to, and that went on tour. And those images beautiful. were so moving and so impactful. Uh, so that let's just figure so this, go, this is going on tour. Yes. Not just an exhibition, you know, but, right? <laughs> imagine imagine uh, seeing 15, a room filled with 15 huge, portraits of a Maasai warrior doing Natrajasana, a police officer doing Natrajasana, yes. a Man soldier Putin, doing it. Yes, exactly. Yes. All of that. Okay, done. Is it a deal? It's a deal. <laughs> it's a deal. It's a deal. And I think it's in LA first where you already have access to all of these amazing connections because that's where you're based, yeah. right there in Santa Monica, is to be able to get a warehouse and, and do, and uh, you know, that all can be done just like that. It's already... It's already happening, right? It is. It's an inside job. <laughs> it is. And it's all about confidence. When you're in that vibration, this is when, oh, people say, oh, I have a, I have a warehouse you can use. And, oh, I'll do the publicity right. for it. I'll do that. You can do yes. this. And, yeah, we, we'll produce that for you. And that's what is beautiful when you're in Dharma, in Dharma when you're in aligned service with, with what's true for you, but also what is impactful for humanity and having a difference is that the universe conspires to have your back and support That's you. So true. So if you're listening or watching and you have a piece of the puzzle to support Robert with this mission, then um, be sure to contact him through his website. Is that a deal? 
It's a deal. Because <laughs> I, I think that that would be powerful. That Ashes and Snow exhibit really moved me you deeply. You saw it 15, 15 years, years ago, ago. And you remember it. I remember it. Because you felt it. And it's like you said, they, the images were large. Arts. They weren't just thumbnails on an Instagram, right. um, which your Instagram is very powerful, by the way. But I could Im can imagine the impact it's so much more powerful of if that was uh, you know, a 40 by 60 yes. you know, image in a, in a room. And that was it. Yes. That was it in a room. And a, yes. and a series, like, oh, wonderful. Oh, it's done. I can't wait to be invited to the premiere. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you have for somebody that doesn't think they can make a difference? You know, because you're making a difference. You know, your photography was not just for you. You, you made it have an impact. What is uh, some advice that you have for somebody that doesn't feel like they can make a difference? To start by, the, the, the camera just taught me that paying attention to someone is making a difference. Mm. So if I was a really great artist, I wouldn't need my camera. I would just look people in the eyes and that would be everything. So to pay attention, mm. to listen, to pay attention to others and to care. Yeah. And, and I, I hear that listening because then people can find what their version of the camera is. Yes. And what they're passionate about. But it doesn't matter. It, they could be delivering the mail. Well, exactly. And if they have a vibe that is present and it's so healing. Right? It's such service to just be kind. Yeah, that is the yoga. And that, that if there's something that's really drawing you passionately to put a voice to, to support that there are ways to do that. Whether you're all about the youth, whether you're all about PTSD or, the, you know, um, or military, whether it's about um, breast cancer survivors, whatever it is, that issue that is really soulful and lights you up emotionally, whether it pisses you off because it, it isn't, is broken, then great, be a part of the solution. Or if it inspires you and you want it to expand, we need people getting off the mat, getting off the bench, getting out of, of, of hiding and stepping into passionately serving in whatever way feels aligned. And um, so thank you for doing that because you certainly have done that. And I, I'm so excited to watch your work just continue to be a bridger of, of humanity and a healer of, of, of humanity. And, and I can only imagine if this is where you are now where the work will go and how many other um, programs it will inspire within prisons or within breast cancer healing or just cancer healing or for amputees. This is just the beginning, Robert. And you're going to also inspire others to take their craft to the next level. And perhaps those people listening and watching to take their authenticity to the next level with their own photography and not just post the perfect yoga pose, but also to post the sad pose, um, the, um, the picture without makeup, the picture that is the take you don't want people to see, you know, the story you don't want people to know about you and to have the courage to actually be seen um, is another um, beautiful thing that I think everybody can do. So where can people find you, my dear brother? Um, because we want your work to get out and we want them to see these images for sure. They can find me at robertsturmanstudio.com, S-T-U-R-M-A-N, or follow uh, Instagram for daily inspiration at Robert Sturman. That's really the best way to stay connected and to just see what's going on as uh, daily, daily offerings. It is so beautiful. I visited your website. There's also prints available if people are really inspired by an image and want to have, have that in their everyday, you know, reference to be able to enjoy or gift to somebody. Um, and so there's wonderful videos. We'll make sure the links to, um, to everything is, is to your Instagram and all of that is there. If you are inspired by this conversation and by Robert's work and what's possible, 
please like and share and send this uh, episode you know, to other people that you think might really benefit from uh, our conversation and what is possible with a camera or, or with a compassionate heart um, or with presence. And I'm so grateful that you've shared your time with us today. I'm grateful too, seriously. It's yeah. an honor. You're, you're an incredible human being. <laughs> yeah, I can feel it. Likewise, yeah. likewise. You bet. We're here <laughs> making right. a difference. And uh, so thank you so much. Uh, you can find me at shamangelichealing.com. And I'm here. This is my passion. This is my mission, my dharma to inspire millions to shine one-on-one, -on -one, in group settings, through podcasts, through online courses, through private uh, sessions and group retreats. And I would love to gift um, a discount on the Empowerment and Awakening Weekend that is here in Sedona. And it is about really taking human optimization and human potential to the next, next level. That's a three and a half day weekend right here in Sedona where we dive into chakras and meditation and lifestyle and yoga and relationships and clear boundaries and really stepping up uh, your fullest potential and helping you heal and release those things in the way. So please check the website for the links to everything that is all about Robert, everything that is all about Anahata. And and uh, this has just been such an honor, and I'm excited to uh, be at the opening. All right. and, and we're going to play this video. We're right? like, it happened here. That's and right. um, it's just the, it's the beginning of many wonderful things. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening and tuning in. This has just been a powerful, delicious treat. And um, please make sure to look at the YouTube version of this, because we'll make sure to show you some of his best of amazing images that we're talking about and more to come. Like it, share it, give us some great reviews so more people can hear about these inspiring conversations. Have a beautiful day and make it your day and listen and touch somebody in life today.